Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing book three in Frank Herbert's Dune series. It's called The Children of Dune. Got book one over here, Dune. Book two, Dune Messiah. Book three, Children of Dune. Book four, God Emperor of Dune, Book 5, Heretics of Dune, and Book 6, Chapter House of Dune. Now, we always discuss the covers first, so let's talk about this cover. This is the cover that came out in the late 70s, early 80s. This is the set of Dune books that I bought for myself when I was a teenager in the 80s. So we have them all right here. We can check them all out. Look at the spines there. They all look like they belong together. I love these covers. You know, that's a cool cover. Um, of course, I've got my big collector's edition Dune book here, which has got a really super dope cover. Um, Dune Messiah. And the Children of Dune, which is the one we're going to be reviewing here in a minute. I consider these three books kind of one large book. Uh, starting with Dune as a young kid and then ending with... Uh, starting with Paul Atreides as a young kid and then ending um, with uh, his children in this book. Uh, just I think it's kind of like just one large book. And then we've got God Emperor of Dune. These covers are dope too. I love these covers. If we can just look at these. These are beautiful, beautiful covers. I love these things. Anyway, we'll put these down here. And then we'll start talking about Children of Dune. So the Dune movie came out Thursday night. I went and saw it Thursday night. And I loved it. So then I went again and saw it Saturday morning. And I loved it even more the second second viewing but in between the first viewing and the second viewing i read children of dune i mean after watching the movie i was just in a very dune mood i had to keep going with dune i was i was just the movie just immerses you in Dune-ness, and I just had to read, because I've already read this one, and I've already read this one, and reviewed them for my channel, so I was, I had to do this one, and I'm glad I did, because I love this book. Actually, this is probably my second favorite Dune book of all time, uh, and as I said before, I kind of consider the first three books just one big novel that should probably be combined into one big novel but that's just the way i see it a lot of you probably won't see it that way but that's the way i see it <clears throat> now you can see my reviews of these two books elsewhere on the channel children of dune takes place well after these two books but paul atreides children are small children they are the children of him and Chani, even though he married another, uh, there was a prince, another princess involved, Arulian, who was the daughter of the emperor, blah, blah, blah. We won't get into any of that, but this book is mostly about Leto, which is his son, Paul's son, and Gamina, which was his daughter, they're twins, they're young, and um, also Stilgar, the book is really a lot about Stilgar and the children and sort of the fact that not a lot of people want these children around. And then we've also got a mysterious preacher that may or may not be a character from these two books. And so that's sort of the mystery. One of the things I love about this is the kids. I love the kids, even though they don't act or behave or even talk like children. One of the reasons they don't act, behave, or talk like children is because they're sort of born with these powers of memory. Like they've got the memories of all humankind sort of inside of them and... Uh, it's, it's, uh, 
you know, they, they it's just so that it makes them like real adults because they can, they don't, they, they see and they see everything. They see everything. And if you've, if you've read the, the uh, Dune books, you know that Paul could sort of foresee the future and things like that. Well, these kids are kind of like on that times a million. They're kind of like that kind of thing going on with them, but times a million. There's, um, they've got like, I th it's called genetic memory. And one of the things I liked about this genetic memory is I kind of believe in that even amongst us people today. So I think that the, our memory, the memory of our ancestors kind of is somewhat infiltrated into our DNA. And that's why a lot of things that we that shouldn't be familiar to us seem familiar to us. And I think it's because of the genetic memory that's carried on. Now, this is just there's no scientific proof of any of my theory here. This is just what I've believed based off of what I've observed in my own life in that, um, you know, when I go to different places like Germany or whatever, and I, and, and, and I, and I, and I, and I feel like I've been there before, but I've not been there before, but I, have since found out, you know, because I was adopted, and I never knew my biological parents for the longest time, and so when I would be in Germany and I would feel like this familiarity to it, I was like, I don't know why this, but once I did find my biological parents, well, the my ancestors were from Germany. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I think that there's something to what Frank Herbert has come up with is the genetic memory. Well, with these two kids, they've got genetic memory of everybody that's ever lived in the universe or something to that effect. And it's just cool. Now, they've got their Aunt Aaliyah, which in, and a lot of these people in the book are intimidated by these kids, but Aunt Aaliyah ain't having no part of it. And then uh, Grandma Jessica kind of comes into the book where um, she's been living on Kaladin and she sort of returns from Kaladin into the story. And then my favorite part is the Laza Tigers. I got forgot, almost forgot to bring those up. The Laza Tigers are these tigers that are that have brain implants within them and they are so the tigers can be controlled. And these tigers are being trained to specifically kill these two children. And I just I loved every scene with the Laza Tigers, and then I loved all the scenes with the preacher, the mysterious preacher, the sightless preacher, the uh, blind, his eye sockets are blackened, and he's a mystery. We don't know if he's a character from the past or what he is. And then, um, of course, Duncan Idaho is back. You know, we thought he, spoiler alert, we thought he may or may not have died in one of these previous books, but he's come back. Of course, as a Gola, which is a reincarnated, I mean, I guess, I guess me just mentioning that spoils everything that happens. But if you've, if you're watching this review, I imagine you probably read Dune, I mean, you probably read all of this stuff, so I'm not spoiling anything. I dig this book quite a bit. I think that's every bit as engrossing as the first Dune. I, so I, the first Dune is by far my favorite science fiction novel of all time. If you've watched my top 10 Science fiction novels. You know this one finishes number one. I think Dune Messiah is like a bridge book. It's like a, it's a, it's a bit of a bridge between this book and the second book. I think the second book we get, once again, we get just right into the nitty gritty and immersive details of the Dune universe that the original Dune novel had. Messiah kind of got away from that a little bit, but then we get back. I think it's like a, I really do think the trilogy, the three books as a trilogy work best as one giant story together. And I hope since seeing the movie Dune, and I know that there's part one and they're going to film part two of this book. I hope they film the rest of it. I just fucking keep, hope they keep going on with those movies because those movies were fucking dope. Oh my God, that movie. I, I just, I can't believe how beautiful it was to look at. I just, I just, it immediately, I just immediately, after viewing it the first time Thursday night, I immediately went home, picked up this novel and started reading just with all the beautiful visuals of that movie in my head, just getting back into this. It was so delicious and I loved it so much. And I just finished this and just rewatched the Dune movie again today so 
This I've been the last three days have been nothing but Dune immersion for me, and I I loved it. Loved it. I'm gonna give the Children of Dune a ten out of ten, just like I gave Book One. I think it's just after after that. I mean, it's it's just so just a, it's an awesome book. It's an awesome book. 